Hey guys, in this video today, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of ideas for how to get money to pay for an investment when you are dead broke. If you are dead broke watching this, first of all, I'm not judging you. Um, I've been there, right? I've been at the point where I was searching behind couch cushions to find change just to pay for food. I've been to the point where I was intentionally overdrawing my bank account just to buy a little extra to get me through a couple days until I got paid again, right? So I know what it's like, and I'm not looking down on you at all. In fact, the reason that I decided to make this video is because um, there are quite a few folks that I've talked to about my data analyst mentorship that are in exactly that situation, that they, they're they in a place in life with their, where they don't have a lot of money, and so they would like me to help them to get a high paying career as a data analyst so they can have that money and they're not in that situation. But it kind of puts them in this, um, in this dilemma where they need money to pay for the mentorship, but they only get money after they do it, right? And so they have to find some sort of way to pay for it before they've gone through the training and before they've gotten this new career as a data analyst. And so this, what I'm going to go over in this video will apply not just to that, but to any investment that is going to make you considerably more money in the future than you have to invest um, up front, right? And so this is not for like buying new shoes or, or buying new rims for your car or something like that. This is only for investments that are going to pay off substantially more than what you pay for them. So for example, somebody coming into my data analyst mentorship program, making $30,000 a year, well, once they get hired as a data analyst, they're looking at 60,000 a year or more, right? So they're paying to make an increase in salary of $30,000. And then let's say that their career lasts another 20 years. And, and let's just say for the sake of simplicity that they never get another raise in those entire 20 years, which is highly unlikely right, because it's a very high growth field, but just for the sake of simplicity, $30,000 times 20 years, that's $600,000. And so I don't have a specific price point for my mentorship. It really depends on each individual client and where they're at and, and what they're looking for. But I can tell you for every client, that's a whole lot less than 600,000. So the investment is paying off many, many, many times. And so that's the context of this. I'm not talking about buying something just because you want it. I'm talking about buying something that's going to pay off uh, many times what you paid for it. And there are a lot of ways that you can raise money for something if you really want to. And the, really the biggest roadblock is just our, our head junk, right? Our psychology that we get into this pattern of saying, I can't afford it, I can't afford it, I can't afford it. Instead of getting resourceful and saying, okay, rather than I can't afford it, well, how can I afford it? If you'll start asking yourself that question, you'll start recognizing that for whatever it is that you want to do, if you want to raise a money, there is a way for you to raise that money, right? There is, a, there are probably a thousand ways and you just have to find them, right? And you're completely capable of doing that. But if you're in this mindset of I can't afford it, it's closed off to me, then you're never gonna be able to do that, right? You have to shift your mindset to how can I afford it? How can I raise the money? How can I be resourceful? So with that said, let me give you some ideas. And my ideas might just jog your imagination a little bit, and you might come up with some ideas of your own that I never even thought of. And if you did, please uh, do me a favor, put those ideas in the comments, right? Because they may be really helpful. They may absolutely save somebody's career, <laughs> actually, if you come up with a good idea that I couldn't come up with on my own. So basically, um, getting money to make an investment, there, there are four ways to do it, right? One is find money, two is borrow money, three, sell stuff, and four is earn money. Right, so let's go through each of these with some specifics, right? You find money like you find money that you already have that you might have forgotten about. Borrow money means that you get money from somebody else and pay them back later, sell stuff, obviously sell anything that you have that's valuable, earn money is find a way to get paid new money aside from whatever your full-time job is or whatever your regular income is. So um, find money. Do you have old bank accounts 
that might still have a bit of money in it? Do you have uh, retirement accounts like a 401k plan or an IRA that you can pull money out of? And, um, and, and if so, oftentimes there's going to be a penalty, right? Like there's an early withdrawal penalty if you take money out of your 401k before you turn 65 or, or whatever the age is. I don't remember. Um, and, and then the question becomes, is it worth the penalty, right? So if you can, um, like, let's say that the penalty is 20%. I think that's pretty standard. If you can pull out money, pay a 20% penalty, but now in six months later, you've doubled your salary, you've doubled your income, like is that worth a 20% penalty to double your income? Um, in that case, probably, but you have, to, you have to figure out the numbers for each individual investment that you're looking at. Um, another good one is crypto. Have you bought crypto and forgotten about it? This, this has saved my butt multiple times in the past because I bought um, really just a little bit of crypto years and years ago when it was worth next to nothing and kind of forgot about it. And then it's, uh, it's paid for a lot for me when I was broke. Um, and it really actually helped me through a lot of tough times. So do you have crypto that you could sell? Um, do you have people that owe you money, right? Like somebody that you lent money to three years ago and they never paid you back. Could you get some of that money? Right, so those are some ideas for how to find money. Now, for how to borrow money, um, obviously credit cards. Do you have credit cards that are not maxed out? Or can you ask for a credit line increase on the credit cards that you have? Can you apply for a new credit card? Are you getting letters in the mail uh, with credit card offers? Um, and again, just like the penalty with the 401k, you gotta ask yourself, is it worth the interest rate? Right, so um, let's say that, well, let, let's use a really simple example. Let's say that if you give me $100, then I'll give you $200 next year, right? One year from now, I'll give you $200. Well, let's say that you don't have the $100, you have to borrow it, and your credit card is a 30% interest rate, right? A 30% is high, right? That's a terrible interest rate, right? So. You, but what you're doing is you're borrowing $100, right? You're getting $200. You're paying 30% interest. So what that means is that you're, you end up, um, you pay nothing, right? Because the credit card's paying it. You get $200 and then you pay $130 because you pay the $100 plus the 30% interest, right? So. Um, looking at everything included, you're, you're making $70 profit on that deal. So even though the interest rate is terrible, the rate of return, the, um, like the, the reward of the investment is much higher than the interest rate, so it still makes it a pretty good deal, right? And so if you're gonna use a credit card to make an investment, you have to uh, kind of understand the numbers and, and get an idea of, okay, is it going to be worth paying the interest rate that I have to pay. Um, and this is true for any, any kind of borrowing, by the way, any kind of borrowing that carries interest. Um, you could do a personal loan. Um, there's, I, I think there's payoff.com is, is one. There's a bunch of sites that'll do personal loans for you. It's very similar to a credit card. Basically, you pay a high interest rate um, and you pay it off in, in payments similar to what you would as a credit card. Uh, and you can, you can look, there's a bunch of sites, just Google personal loan, you'll find a whole bunch of stuff. If you own a house, you can get a home equity line of credit, right? Which is nice because you're paying a really, really low interest rate because it's secured, um, right? So you can look into that if you don't have one already. Um, and then if, if all of the above fails, well, you can always ask family or friends. And if all of those fail, then you can try asking family and friends. Right, ask them for a loan. Um, I got a guy who is is coaching me with my sales right now, who told me that he got started in this coaching business by paying for a program that he borrowed eight thousand dollars from a friend in order to pay for, and he said it was the best decision of his life because it's paid off so many times that initial eight thousand dollars, and he was able to easily pay his friend back. Now, if you like uh, to make it more attractive for your family or friends, you could offer them a premium, right? So if you're gonna borrow $8,000, you can say, okay, I'll, you know, I'll pay you back $10,000 in a year, 
right? Or, you know, you can maybe do some work for them. Maybe you can clean their house or mow their lawn or <laughs> do something to make it worthwhile for them. And also to show them that you're serious, that you're not just going to like take their money and, and invest in this thing. And then like two weeks later, you've forgotten about it and you're onto something else, right? So that's kind of the second method is to borrow money. Third method is, of course, to sell stuff. Um, chances are you have something that has some value that you could sell. Could be a car, a boat, a lawnmower, um, music equipment. You know, if you, I'm a musician, I have a ton of music equipment, like 99% of it I will almost never use, right? So if I'm in a pinch, I always have music equipment that I could sell. Um, could be furniture, could be jewelry, right? Chances are you've got something of value that you could sell if it's worthwhile to do so. And then, of course, if you're making an investment that's going to pay you back, then you can always just buy the stuff back again once you make the money back. And then finally, the fourth way is just to earn money. And it's, it's never been easier than right now to make extra money doing little side gigs and side jobs. So I got a whole bunch of examples for you on that. In fact, I'm going to erase this and um, write them down for you. OK, so first one is Uber, right? You drive people around. It's really easy to do Uber. You can do it on your own schedule. You can do it as much or as little as you like, and you get paid pretty decently from it. Um, another thing you can do is delivery, right? You can work for Uber Eats. You can work for DoorDash. You can work delivering groceries. Just about everybody offers delivery these days, and it's really easy to get a part-time delivery job. Um, Amazon, I think they hire on a, like a gig basis for delivery. You can do Turo. Right. If you have a car, you can um, rent out your car to people on an app called Turo, T-U-R-O, if you can't read that. Um, well, like while you're not using the car, you can make some extra money from it. Another thing you can do is go to Craigslist. Craigslist.org and uh, go to the gigs section, G-I-G-S, gigs section, where it's a whole bunch of little um, one-off jobs that some of them pay pretty decently and you can find just about anything. So it may be a cleaning job. It might be a, a help with labor of some sort. It might be bartending. Um, just like there's pretty much everything you can think of there's a gig for on Craigslist gigs. Um, another good one is transcription, right? If you want to just be able to do something from home in your computer, uh, transcription is a good one. So that means that you watch videos and you write out the words that they're saying in the videos. And, um, it, and this doesn't pay much. Most of these are not going to pay a whole lot, right? But again, this is just temporary to raise a little bit of money for this investment. So you can do transcription. Um, if you speak another language, you can do translation, right? Um, and there's a site. I'm blanking on the name, but I will put the link in the description if I remember. There's a site that's, that's really good for transcription and translation. And, you know, if you know the, another language, then translation pays quite a bit better than transcription does. Um, another thing you could do is Airbnb, right? If you have, let's say you have a spare bedroom that you're not using, um, you could rent it out on Airbnb and you can make pretty good money pretty fast doing that. You could do dog walking. I'm running out of space on my whiteboard here. You could walk people's dogs. And I know there's an app for that. I don't remember the name of it. Um, just look for dog walking app, right? Um, or probably you could do dog sitting would be the same thing. Uh, and then you can do, there's another app called TaskRabbit. Task Rabbit. I know my my writing is getting worse and worse here, but um, Task Rabbit is kind of a cool app. It's just you make yourself available to do just kind of everyday jobs, and people can hire you. So it might be picking up something from the store. Um, it might be assembling their new IKEA furniture. Um, it's just any kind of errands that there are any kind of like small jobs they'll pay you to do in this app called TaskRabbit. So as you can see, there are a ton of options for making a quick buck um, in this modern gig economy. 
right? So, and I'm sure there are a thousand more that I haven't even mentioned here. So again, like if you know some other ones and you think they're pretty cool, let me know in the comments. Like tell me as many ideas as you can. That would be really, really helpful, not just for me, but for the people that are watching. So I hope this is kind of brought in your mind and made you realize that really nothing is inaccessible, right? If you really, really want to be able to invest in something, there's a way, right? There's a way and you can find it. You just have to be a little more creative in your thinking. You just have to be a little bit more resourceful, just have to be willing to put in the effort uh, to make something happen. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you're first to get all my new videos. Leave me a comment, tell me what you think, send this video to a friend who needs it. And then if you enjoyed this video, I think you'd also really enjoy this video as well.